Most of you have probably already switched to Windows 10 to enjoy a unified search experience, newer animations, and a lot of new features like multiple desktops. But here's the big question. How good is the inbuilt security in Windows 10? Let's see how Windows Defender and Microsoft's new browser, Edge, can deal with some not-so-friendly links. This is a collection of malware that ranges from Trojan to Adware. There are quite a few samples, and I've tested all of these. They're all alive, and I think around two or three of these are detected by Google Chrome. So we can take that as the baseline protection that everyone has, and uh, we'll see how much better or worse Microsoft's default protection is. The first file is downloading. Now keep in mind many of these security features are still very similar to Windows 8. We still have the same Windows Defender except that it is updated and we also have the same smart screen filter which was previously there in Internet Explorer. Windows says 1.exe contained a virus. Big deal. Even I could have said that looking at that file name. But anyway, good job. Let's proceed to the next URL. So at least we know that Microsoft blocked one file. Second one is also blocked by a smart screen filter. Let's move on to the third. And that is also blocked by a smart screen filter. So far, so good. Let's continue with uh, some other links. These Google Docs URLs usually get taken down very quickly. Luckily, this one's up. Now I know a lot of people prefer to use Google Chrome over Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge, and I would do that because I absolutely hate Bing. Doesn't matter how much protection you can offer Microsoft, I'd rather have an AV and use Google Chrome. But again, that's just my preference. I'm not gonna force it upon everybody. If you like Edge, all the power to you. Now, another thing that I forgot to mention is Windows Defender's new user interface has this kind of schizophrenia where it's one kind of interface at one time and another interface in another part. Like the settings is actually the new Metro UI style interface and the actual application window is the traditional Windows window interface. So we've got two different types of UI within one utility. Now that's just silly to me. I don't know how Microsoft have designed this. I mean, such a big company with so many designers at work. How did they possibly think that this would be a great idea? Anyway, that's not my expertise either. I'm no designer, so who am I to say? But, um, well, I am a security tester, and it seems like this one was blocked, so kudos for that. Good work, Microsoft. So far, we haven't seen any file run. Now I'm interested to see how it deals with this link because this is a PUP and it's detected by the majority of anti-malware engines. It's a very well-known PUP. So let's see what Microsoft does. Because I know Microsoft has a pretty bad record when it comes to PUPs. They usually do not detect many PUPs. And it seems like this file has bypassed Microsoft's smart screen filter. Let's go ahead and run it. and I think it's going to execute successfully. So that is our first miss. And I was kind of uh, hoping that they would have improved their PUP detection. I don't know why Microsoft does this. It usually does not catch PUPs. I think it's kind of part of their policy to let such programs through, but the majority of the AV industry detects it, so 
I would expect Microsoft should also add it to their blacklist, but who knows, maybe the PUP vendors have good friendship and they have some financial agreements, I don't know. I'm not going to state anything unless I know it for sure. Here's another one. Let's go ahead and get our Lucky Savings version 3. I feel so lucky, I think I'm going to get some malware. I don't know why Windows takes so long to analyze every file. Maybe it's just trying to build up suspense. Alright, um, this one is allowed to run too. I'm not exactly sure what it does. Let's hope it does something. Okay. Ask for administrator privileges. That's usually not a good thing. Alright, let's see what it does with those privileges now. Let's proceed to the next URL. Oh, and by the way, we've got some Media Player Classic happily eating my bandwidth in the background. Great. The last file is uh, not commonly downloaded and could harm your computer. So Windows gives different types of alerts depending on the type of threat. Like for the first file it said uh, it is a virus with certainty, but in this case it says it's not commonly downloaded. So it's good that they have different types of uh, or different methods of detection. This seems more like a zero day alert. Maybe it's just because it's not downloaded enough. I don't know whether to consider this sufficient warning or not to uh, delete it or to run it. Since it is giving me the option, I guess it would be unfair to uh, run this file. It says and could harm your computer. Now if I was testing any third party anti-malware application and I got this alert, I would have clicked on delete. So to click on run here would be unfair towards Windows. So I'm just going to delete this and uh, that's that. That brings us to the end of the link test. However, we do have some crap going on in the background, so I'll let that finish and uh, we'll see how well Microsoft's default protection did. It better be good, especially with them stealing all my data now with Cortana and uh, their new privacy policy. By the way, here is the virus total analysis for that adware, and as you can see, a fair number of anti malware engines detected. 39, in fact. After Adware Classic completed its install process, I scanned the system with Zamana Anti-Malware and Hitman Pro, and the results uh, reflect on exactly what we just saw. Tons of riskware and adware. There's even a small Trojan detection in here somewhere. There you go. But I doubt if it's really a Trojan. I guess it's just another part of that adware. I mean, adware in some ways is similar, so maybe some AVs classify some part of the adware as a Trojan. So, what's my final verdict? Well, this is not the most terrible result ever. I've seen worse. And the funny thing is, I've seen worse from paid anti malware companies. I'm not going to say exactly which one I'm talking about, but. You know, I've seen worse results than this. It's not bad for default protection, but given the fact that Microsoft is stealing your data anyway, and uh, there's so many free antivirus companies that do so much better, you might as well just install some kind of security. Now, if you do plan on using Windows 10's default security, you should definitely install some kind of zero-day protection because this is not at all good against unknown malware. So you could go with uh, Komodo Firewall or Private Firewall. My recommendations as in Windows 8, the same one supply. But I think, for me, I would use some kind of security, especially because adware and riskware and um, PUP, they've become such a menace these days. And that is primarily what I want to prevent by using a security program. So the fact that Microsoft takes it easy on those guys doesn't really make me very happy. But anyway, that's your choice if you feel that uh, you're good with just pretty basic protection. You can actually use this. It's not so bad. It does prevent most of the big stuff. 
or the really harmful stuff. But then again, it depends on what you'd like to call harmful. So that's my advice. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know your thoughts on Windows 8 and Windows 10. How do you feel about Microsoft's two operating systems that have anti-malware protection? What do you think about the security of Windows 10? And uh, not just the security of Windows 10, your general experience with Windows 10. I would be happy to share them with you if you think I should do a purely Windows review or something like that. So let me know in the comments below, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Like the video if you did, subscribe to the PC Security channel for more, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.